Peace, peace, family. Today, let's talk about the astral world. Angels, demons, jinns, archangels, werewolves, vampires, incubus, succubus, spirits. Okay, um, in dealing with astral travel, you have to be very careful because there are many different realms. There are realms going down, and there are many different realms going up. And even within third density, or in this third dimension, there are many spiritual battles going on around us. A lot of people aren't necromancers, don't have mediumship, or not empaths. So they can't feel the type of vibration or energy. But those that vibrate on a higher level can understand the frequency of spiritual war going around us. So like let's say sometimes when you hear thunder and lightning, that can mean one of two things. Number one, that Mother Earth is purging and cleansing herself. Number two, that could possibly be Mama Oya, Papa Shango, who is the Orisha of lightning and thunder. And it could also be Thor. Because remember, Thor has protected nine realms. That could be a battle going on somewhere in a different realm in a different dimension to where the gods and the goddesses are battling, are warring, are sparring. So you have to remember, when astral traveling, you would like to have some spirit guides or some type of archangel or an angel or a demon that you work with. Because a lot of people don't know that you're born and assigned with a demon, an angel, and an archangel. Now, there's a book by S by Ali S. Myers that you can look up called Deity Linkage. And that can give you the numerology and can basically pinpoint who were the spiritual parents or the deities that helped create your soul. So, um, in the realms below, you can either go down or you can go up. But the problem is, when you're going down and when you're going up, you need a purpose of what you're doing and why you're doing it. Because you can get bruised and scarred while in the astral world, meaning whatever reflects in the physical realm can happen in the astral realm. So let's say you're in the astral realm, you come back with bruises and scars. That's because some incubus or succubus spirit tried to get a hold of you. And the same way that you can get raped in the physical realm, you can get raped in the astral realm. So you have to understand that when astral traveling, you need to be safe and know what you're doing. You need to know your purpose and where you're going. Because on this level, you have demons. But demons can jump up to the astral world, to the next realm, to come and help and protect you. Because truthfully, demons are not really checking for humans like that. There are more demons that want to work with you than do harm with you. So a lot of people say that as a demon that attacked me wouldn't would not. It was more of an intranquil spirit disguised as a demon. What is an intranquil spirit? That could be somebody who was a murderer, a rapist, or died in a very, very, very violent way or, or violent manner. So you have demons on the earth realm that can jump up to the astral realm or the angelic realm because they're more of fallen angels. That's why they exist on this realm. But they can work a lot faster for you going downwards. Now, when going up, there are more than four or seven archangels. There are like thousands of angels. So, technically, the angels can work a little faster in the astral realm. But you also have jinns. And what are jinns? Jinns I relate them to genies and geniuses because they are spiritual entities that have never manifested in a body and exist within a different realm. So you can work with jinns. There are also vampires and werewolves that exist in different realms. You have to be aware of them. So you have to be careful when you're astral traveling because you can draw incubus and succubus spirits if you don't have spirit guides or ancestors that are venerated that can help protect or fight for you. You know, you should always have warriors. That's why it's good to have gargoyles in the meditation or in astral travel because they can protect you, you know, um, or some type of archangel that you work with. So that's one of the things that you want to be aware of when um, astral traveling and astral projection, that you have angels, demons, jinns, you have incubus and succubus spirits, and you have um, vampires, werewolves, um, Unfortunately, there have been people that didn't come back because they got them tied to their cord and there was nothing to bring them back. 
So the bodies, they just remained, you know. So you can actually die in the astral world or, or in astral traveling if you don't properly know how to come back. You know, some people are phased out, and that was it. But um, that's basically a short lecture for the day. That if you're going to astral travel through astral projection, make sure that you are grounded, protected. Um, there are crystals that can help protect you, like uh, anything like black obsidian, black tourmaline, uh, black onyx, shunite, um, smoky quartz. You can use crystals for going up, such as quartz. Selenite, things like that. There are powerful crystals that, that will help and save you, you know, or that can protect you while astral travel. But that's the class for the day, family. You know, I hope that you uh, learned a little bit of something so that way the next time you're astral traveling or opening your third eye for universal knowledge and expansion, you know, the dangers, you know, and the precautions because a lot of kids will tell you that, oh, if you astral travel and open up your third eye and this and that, but they're not telling you the, the pitfalls, you know, so you have to be very, very careful. Uh, this done for somebody who's more adept. You know, when you're just beginning to starting off, you need all the spirit guides, all of the archangels, uh, elementals, ancestors, or any type of warriors that 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 will work and fight for you. You know, in your corner. Um, but peace, family. Peace, peace.